Ben bien le bonjour et aux tinoïdes qui me suivent là. J'ai besoin d'un médecin. Donc je suis allé voir le docteur Reed. Donc je sais pas s'il va accepter euh, avec celui qui c'est un spécialiste des transfusions sanguines, mais il est, je crois pas qu'il soit une neurologue. C'est un brillant chirurgien, je crois. Mais est-ce qu'il euh, est-ce qu'il s'occupe du cerveau, ce monsieur Hein J'y ai joué ce matin, je crois. Je crois que je suis encore en train de chercher les touches. Je suis toujours pas. Tu n'es toujours pas. Ah voilà, c'est ça que je voulais. Qu'est-ce que je vais faire là Assurer tellement. Ah, voilà, je vais faire ça, ok. Faut que je reste sur la dame. Euh, la dame elle a 13 mètres, donc je vais sortir par la porte. Maintenant que je peux rentrer quand je veux là-dedans. Peut-être qu'il y aura peut-être d'autres produits. Il faut... Ah regarde, je vois des trucs à lui. Je vois, je vois, je vois, je vois des trucs qui sont... Ah oh, c'est fermé Ah oh, c'est fermé J'ai pas le... J'ai pas le droit d'y piquer. Suite, on peut rien piquer chez les... Vous êtes pas sympathique, les chers collègues. Hein Vous pourriez partager un peu euh, vos trucs. Hein Bon, moi, je veux rassurer Thelma. Où es-tu, Thelma Thelma Thelma, je t'ai vu Allez là, allez là, Thelma oh, Bonjour, petite Thelma, moi, comment tu vas, ma petite vampirette On va alors voir qui sont personnels, voir s'il y a des nouvelles. Ouais, parlez-moi des vampires vu que c'est nouveau. Alors, vous souffrez seulement d'un désordre mental. Allez, on dit que c'est un vampire. Allez, on dit ça. Vous pourriez être en danger. Strange and ancient beings that were here before this island even had a name. Tell me, Thelma, what do you really know about vampires? I saw one and he saw me. I watched him hunt and kill. I saw his terrible wounds heal as his victim died. And then I knew I was saved. You mean you actually saw a vampire here in London? Yes, and it has been the answer to my pain. I must drink and kill to regenerate my decaying body. I am a vampire too. You have no idea what problems your claim could cause if heard by the wrong people, Miss Howcroft. You must stop this nonsense now. Why fear the truth? Strange things live in the dark, Dr. Reed. Strange and ancient beings that were here before this island even had a name. I have made inquiries about the men who were tracking you, Miss Howcroft. I did not expect a mortal to have this sort of courage. Speak, Doctor. Why are they hunting me down?
It was a misunderstanding. These hunters were in fact looking for a very different creature. But they mistakenly put their sights on you. I knew it. I have become undone. Those hunters have discovered me. But they don't know what I'm capable of. If you'll accept some advice from a petty mortal, I think you should assume a low profile and just quietly disappear into the shadows. You are right. And you have served me well, mortal. Take this as a reward for your time. Perhaps I will allow you to drink deep of my blood. One day. Thank you. I'll keep that proposition in mind. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Good evening, Miss Howcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. It's locked, all right.
wave of bitter death to drown and purge our city. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. Do you require medical assistance? <laughs> That's something I didn't expect to hear again. A doctor concerned with the health of his patients. Yeah. I could use some help. On several matters, in fact. I don't know which kind of doctor you're used to dealing with, but it's a doctor's purpose to heal people. And is it your purpose as well, Mr. Reed? I would say it's a convenient way for gaining people's trust. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. I cannot enter. It's locked, all right.
It's locked. I cannot enter. It's locked. Cannot enter.
See them fancy clothes? This one's a top of... It's locked, all right. Whispers of monsters got folk gossiping and scared. It's people. Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed.
So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Some call this the bad part of town. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburn. Good evening, madam. It's Dr. Reed again. May I come in? You best come back in the morning, doctor. I'll leave you then. Good night.
Don't forget to count each bullet you fire. <laughs> you told me that already. <laughs> nice shot. You learn quickly. Pointing an empty gun could be a fatal mistake. It's easier when I picture the bastard's face. It's locked. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Back to the docks, are we? You remember me, then? Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Uh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. Why are you teaching your waitress how to use a pistol? Sabrina is a nice girl who's already faced a lot of problems in her life. She does not need another. What can you tell me about this part of town? Well, it's not that bad. Thanks to people like the sad saint at the East End. Who? Sean Hampton, our own private holy figure. Few are foolish enough to make peace with the gangs. Sean is one of them. How is it you can keep this place open? This part of town doesn't seem particularly safe. Well, since everybody needs a drink, my pub is considered neutral ground by most groups. Since I'm here, is there anything I can do? Well, perhaps, Doctor. Peace partly depends on my stock of gin. Uh, with the epidemic, my supplies are running low. How could a physician help you in this matter? I have a small warehouse just past the quarantine line. Perhaps, with you being a doctor, you could go there and come back? Doctors aren't immune to disease, you know. Very well. Show me where it is. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's the key to get in. You're about to save many dry throats. You're something of a figurehead around here. I'm only pouring alcohol for everyone to forget their troubles. Sean Hampton is the one giving them long-term hope. I see. So you get pressure from all sides about how this place should be run, do you? Well, something like that. Nothing that a few wise words and a bottle of gin can't solve. Sabrina seems very fond of you, Tom. I like her too. I really do. I know I'm her boss, and I'm much older and all. But I like her, for sure. What is bothering you, then? Sabrina is an angry one. She wears it like a coat. I'm not sure I can make her shed that anger. Uh, it hurts to see her like that. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. I should shut the turquoise for a time. Good evening, Mr. Delaney. What? Ah, oh, you're that doctor. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. I hope I live long enough to see them wet the water. A good drink's just as likely to cause a problem as to solve one. Evening, miss. Well, I never. That's a first. Customers who make that much mess rarely come back. Don't mind in fancy togs. I'm much more myself than when we first met. 
By the way, I'm Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome back to the Turquoise Turtle then, Doctor. I'm Sabrina Cavendish, how can I help you? What can you tell me about this area? People don't appreciate that line of questioning round here. You best be more careful with what you say, sir. You look concerned, Miss Cavendish. This is a bad borough. Most people I know are afraid. Most locals will rob you blind, or worse. You best mind your step. I have nothing to fear from the people round here, miss. Yeah, I'm a brave woman myself, Dr. Reed, but I'd be a fool to think I'm invincible. This place seems, how shall I put it, very colorful. I'm sure it has plenty of stories to tell. We get people of all sorts here. It's that rare place in the docks where you can have a drink without being murdered. At least it's not happened yet. So this bar is neutral territory then? Yeah. Tom's convinced this is something the locals need. No one ever draws a weapon here. That's one of the reasons I accepted the job. Your boss must be quite the negotiator to force such an agreement. Yeah. Tom's a great bloke. Mr. Hampton, who runs the night asylum, he's the only other man that's able to keep peace around here. Excuse my curiosity, but where exactly are you from, Miss Cavendish? Something bothering you? What, my name? Or my complexion? I'm sorry if I worried you. I was just curious to find out if you know this part of town well. Nosy. My dad was a sailor from Bombay. And my mum was a maid born up in Glasgow. They got married in London. And here I am. Believe me, I never judge someone on their place of birth or the colour of their skin. If that's true, you'd be one of the few not to make fun of me. Just you, Tom, Dyson, Miss Fishburne, and of course Mr. Hampton. Sabrina, tell me about your true feelings for your boss. I love Tom. Not ashamed of it. Don't care if the customers joke about it, neither. Who's mocking you? I mean, we're always together. People will talk, won't they? Does Tom love you? Yeah, but he's always reluctant to take it further. It's not because I'm younger, or because of the color of my skin. He hates jokes about us. I know you've been learning to use a gun, Sabrina. What are you up to? I just want to feel safe when I go home at night. Guns are not toys, and are certainly not to be handled when one is agitated. I don't care. Next time some drunk bastard tries to drag me into the yard, he'll be the one bleeding. Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Why does your waitress feel in danger working on the docks? This part of town is dangerous for all, but for women it's worse, as always. Sabrina is a brave girl, but she can't help feeling in danger. Do you think she has good reason to feel this way? Are you not worried about her safety? Of course I am. The truth is, she's tougher than me deep inside. She just has to learn to control it.
Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Oh, j'aime pas le chercher mort là. Pas normal ça. Oh, J'ai cru que ça allait encore bugué quoi. Je pense que ça a failli bugger quand même, mais voilà. C'est bizarre que je trouve pas le collier là. Où est-ce qu'il est ce, 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 ce le prix collier là Il est dans le coin ce collier. Il dit que c'est dans le secteur là. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? Can I see what you have to sell? As long as you have money, I'll show you all I have. Fils graisse. Ressort poudre avec la dalu. Cette gâchette. Bon, elle vend pas de, de collier, pas intéressant. Il est où, euh, Digby là Est-ce que je cherche un collier, moi Ah, une nouvelle question. Tell me what you saw. It was a few years ago. Clay Cox was still the boss then. 
He'd sent me to the shipyard to find out who was stealing tools and ropes at night. Go on. First, I thought it was an old lady with a limp. It looked frail and crooked. Then I saw it grab a bloody beam and lift it like it was a stick. I shouted. It looked straight at me. Do you know what it was? It was all eyes and long teeth, but I, I, could, I couldn't see its face. I shot at it when it moved towards me, and I hit it. And then it jumped and vanished in the shadows. You could have imagined all that. These docks can be so gloomy at night. With the fog and the wind and the boats creaking? No, Doctor. That night I saw the fucking sewer dog for real. It's not a beast like the stories say. It's the ghost of an old woman. Bullets can't stop it. No one believes me. Are your friends mocking you? Even if Weena told me once to never speak about it. But I know what I saw. And it wasn't a human. Not a human at all. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? Tell me your feelings about Booth's belief in monsters, Edwina. It makes him look weak in front of the boys. That's my feeling about it. But ghosts don't scare me. You don't believe he really saw something, then? I don't care what he saw or not. All I know is that a real man keeps his fears to himself if he wants to be obeyed. Goodbye, Miss Cox. Without the wet boots to keep him things straight, these parts will be running completely amok. It's locked, all right.
Are you sure you'll be able to reach the docks alone? Young man, I am perfectly capable of defending myself. This is a slaughterhouse. From Seymour to my beloved mother Stella. Fishburn, that sneaky bastard. It's locked, all right. Good evening, madam. It's Dr. Reed again. May I come in? You best come back in the morning, doctor. I'll leave you then. Good night.
Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. I have retrieved the gift for your mother, sir. Great. Give it here then and take this for your trouble. I also found the corpses. The ones under which you left the necklace, Mr. Fishburne. Ah, so that's where I left it. I can be a bit stupid sometimes. As a man of science, I'd like to try to understand why you killed those people. Why does there need to be a reason? They were just there. It happened. That's all. You're not a mindless animal, Seymour. Surely you have something to say about these murders. Speak up and I will listen without judgment. Could be right, Dr. Reed. Maybe it'll do some good to confide in a gentleman like you. You being educated and all. Tell me about your victims, Seymour. Who were they? Why them? Was there a link? Why should there be? They just kept getting on my nerves at the worst times, that's all. How many? How many victims? It's not like I keep records. It happens when it happens. You feel nothing, do you? No empathy for your victims at all? You seem pretty calm yourself, don't you? We're not talking about me. That right. Well, our calm's the only thing we have in common then. Did you take pleasure in killing them, Seymour? All those people, all those lives extinguished. I take no pleasure from it. Just gives me peace. Stills the anger. For a time. This rage you feel, have you ever been able to control it, resist it? I... I tried. For my mum, I tried for her. Telling the truth made me feel better. For a while. Don't you think you should seek help? Talk to someone you trust, someone who cares about you? No. And don't dare speak about me to your colleagues either. Keep your mouth shut tight, especially about my mum. Why is your mother protecting you, Seymour? I'm her son. She's the only one who knows me. Sometimes I think she knows me better than I know myself. I understand you love her, but can't you see the awful situation you've put her in? Do you think my mum would have a better life if I were dead? She seems so sad to know me sometimes. I don't believe death is the appropriate sentence for murder. Not in a civilized society. But the last word has to remain with the law. There is no law around here. No justice to be found. In these parts, revenge is the only answer. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne.
Good evening, madam. It's Dr. Reed again. May I come in? You best come back in the morning, doctor. I'll leave you then. Good night. Tom has so much alcohol, he could keep this district afloat for quite some time. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? You lied to me, Tom. Your warehouse wasn't empty. It was inhabited with armed vigilantes. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed, but I thought those Prewin guards would be willing to let someone like you pass without trouble. That was devious of you, Tom. Next time you can bloody well go yourself. I apologize, Doctor, but it's just that I prefer to avoid the law, its enforcers, and all manner of thugs in uniform. Here is your booze. I hope it will appease your customers. Just try not to kill anyone with this poison of yours. <laughs> Believe me, Doctor, most of my customers are less agreeable when sober. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Perhaps I should shut the turquoise for a time.
stupid or something. to India. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swans's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Have you heard about any blackmail going on in this hospital? Blackmail? Nonsense. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before. But I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. There is no need for such animosity between us. Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? That is one point we could agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital instead of a burden. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time, his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. 
The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure, but my young colleague obviously disagrees. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. I really hope you're right about this, Dr. Ackroyd. I'm trusting your judgment on this. I'm not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Dr. Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Ackroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. This is ridiculous. My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see? That is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. Do you think Dr. Strickland has any chance of curing the Spanish flu by himself? His wish to cure the sick is not driven by pride, but by an idealistic view about our mission here. Honestly, I don't know which is worse. You consider him a good practitioner? Yet you will not report his methods. Strickland may be a rival, but I will not use dirty tricks or regulations to prove him wrong. We are doctors, not politicians. Do you need my assistance? Not at all. I am sure that you are used to gaining people's trust with your impressive skills. Well, it will not be the case with me. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? 
Why are you here, then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Have you heard rumors about blackmail in this hospital? No. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'm sure you realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. But I don't want to talk or even write about it now. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'll let you get some rest, then. Good evening, sir. Doctor. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Goswick. I don't want to talk, Doctor. Admit it, Mortimer. Your mother had you hospitalized here because you tried to kill yourself. Yes, it's true. All right, then. This is the first time we've really shared information about your case. Shall we call this progress? Call it what you want, Dr. Reed. You can trust me. I won't report you to the authorities. My one and only concern is your health. I guess I should thank you, then. Can I help you in any way, Mr. Goswick? I wrote a letter for my mother. She was supposed to read it after... After my death. But I suppose she doesn't have to read it now. I see. And is this letter still near the place where you tried to take your own life? Yes. And I don't want anyone reading my last words. I mean, I'm still here. If you bring me back that letter, then perhaps we'll talk. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Doctor. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. Have you heard rumors of blackmail going on in this hospital? Dr. Reed, are you trying to take advantage of me? Of course not, Mrs. Goswick. I'm just curious. Well, go be curious somewhere else, please. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. 
Yes, thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. son wished to die, Beatrice. Why did you hide such crucial information? Are you not aware suicide is a crime? Mortimer could be thrown in jail. I can't let that happen. I won't. I understand you fear the legal consequences, Mrs. Goswick. But don't you realize your silence significantly affects your son's case? All my son needs is help and comprehension. Not judgment and punishment for what he may or may not have done. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. I will not let you down, my boy. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. As for me. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? Have you heard talk of any blackmail here at the hospital? No, nothing. Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick, unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself, but I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. 1915. I was in the army, building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. How are your children after losing their mother? They were smaller then. 
The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. I will not let you down, my boy. In this letter, Mortimer Goswick does nothing to hide his desire to die. I could give it to his mother, but doing so would betray his trust. It's locked. It's locked, all right.
Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Unless you're here to fix my face. No. I don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. Have you heard rumors of underhand dealings in the hospital? If you want to know what's going on here, you better talk to Miss Jones. She knows everything. Especially what she should. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars, if you get my drift. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by them. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. How close are you to Miss Hawcroft? Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for her next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside, is all. While I'm busted on the outside. But she's still beautiful. Living proof that there's hope for me. So do you let her bite you? You know that's not sanitary. And why not? She's only supping a few drops of me blood. And the pain, it's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, Doctor. You do realize she's mentally disturbed. It's called the Cotar Syndrome. She truly believes she's a vampire. In her madness. She never refers to my scars. And frankly, if I could, I'd join our world. It seems much more fun than the real one. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood.
It's locked. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. I have retrieved your letter, Mr. Goswick. I can assure you that nobody read it but me. Thank you. <clears throat> this is for you, then. For your help. And for your silence. I think you should talk to your mother. It would be good for both of you. Thank you, Dr. Reed. I'll think about it. Now, please. Let me be. Why did your mother have you hospitalized here? She seems convinced this is a bad hospital. My mother just wants the best for me. She won't rest while I'm here. She'd go all the way to hell and back to help me. Pembroke Hospital may look unorthodox, but rest assured, you're in good hands here. It's not me you have to convince, Dr. Reed. It's my mother. Is your mother bothering you? As your doctor, I can ask her to leave you alone if you would prefer. That's tempting, Doctor. But you have no idea what my mother is capable of. She would tie herself to my bed if you asked her to leave. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I've read your letter, Mortimer. You wrote about an unbearable feeling of despair while the world crumbles around you. Tell me more about it. There's nothing more to say, really. It's hurtful, it's unbearable, and I don't ask anyone to understand what I feel. Despair is a deadly poison I've tasted myself, sir. We're only tempted to drink it because we're terrified by the uncertainty of the next minute. I know that perfectly, Doctor. For I waited for so long, hoping that the next minute would be less unbearable. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Mortimer is extremely vague as to his motivations for committing suicide. Tell me more about what you know. As you say. Mortimer had no reason to die. All he said to me was that he wanted to make the world a better place. What 
do you think he meant by making the world a better place? Mortimer has always been a sensitive soul. He wouldn't talk to anyone for months after his father passed. It's like he carries everyone's sadness with him. Why did your son feel so useless when facing the world? I think it was more that he could only see the melancholy facets of life. He couldn't help but dwell on such things. Do you realize your son could try to kill himself again? He might succeed next time. I think about it every minute. But I won't stop fighting for my son's future. That's how much I love him. You're right. Your son's death was not fatal. And unlike many on their own, he is lucky to have you by his side. I can't give up on him. I just can't. I have conceded many times in my life, but giving up on my son is something I am incapable of. I have read your son's suicide note. It was not an impulsive gesture. Nor was it his first attempt. He threatened to kill himself a few times before. But I never thought he would dare to punish me this much. Punish you? Why? I've known for a long time he was not happy with his life. But I always hoped he cared enough to avoid making me suffer like this. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Your mother won't let you down, Mortimer. Don't you share her hope for a better future? No. I don't. Won't you even try? Do you want me to promise you I'll get better? Do you want me to tell her the same thing? I could, but it would not change anything. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Doctor. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. Sweet girl. Reads me like a book. I never could keep it. Good evening, Miss Howcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. Why do you feel so attached to Mr. Elwood? Why him? I'm... I, I'm not sure, Doctor. I think we have a bond of some sort. We've both suffered so much. He's the only mortal I... I find interesting.
Do you plan to make him a vampire too? Of course not. How could I inflict my curse on anybody else? I'm not that cruel, Doctor. Would you say you and Mr. Elwood are romantically involved? No. No, Thomas is a delicate soul. Even though he disguises it. But I am not the woman he needs. No, for I am a vampire, Doctor. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. I cannot enter. The flower's dying. It needs water.
Oh, je suis à fond dans le truc là, j'ai même pas vu là. Salut Sébastien. <rire> Et voilà. Moi, je suis chez toi aussi. Tu joues à quoi là Arme, canépé, d'arbaz. Oh, Assassin's Creed ça. C'est quoi C'est lequel celui-là Le syndicat Ah ouais. Ah, ça c'est bien ça. J'ai raté mon petit cède. C'était trois fonds dans le truc là. J'attends des gens alors, il va que j'y aille. Hein. Ils sont au niveau 10, hein, ça devrait être gérable. Hein. Là, c'est des petits rats. Ils sont en bas, les méchants, là. Ah, non, il y en a là aussi en face. Je les vois pas. 10, 10, 11. Oh, merde. Eh ben il était costaud le 12 hein Ou c'est moi qui n'étais pas costaud Un des deux Je pense que je peux aller là-bas Ça va mon petit mon petit dark Il n'y a rien, je suis venu ici, il n'y a rien. J'ai fermé la porte, donc, euh, donc je suis venu ici pour rien. Oh, J'ai trouvé quand même pas mal de trucs quand même. Ouais, c'est ça, t'es des de sang, hein. ouais, je sais, ouais, c'est moi. Euh, il faut que j'arrive à aller ici. Je peux peut-être passer par le bas ou... Est-ce que c'est ouvert ici Non, ici c'est fermé. Hein. Donc faut que je passe par le bas. Pas le choix. Ici c'est fermé, non C'est ouvert ici, bizarre. Hein.
Non, pas de ce côté. Si, je peux descendre de ce côté-là. Il y a un mec, et là-bas, il y a une grosse bête qui est sensible euh, aux attaques euh, comme ça. J'arrive pas à sommer. Ouah, je sais pas ce que c'était, j'ai jamais tué un truc comme ça encore. Donc je pense que je vais aller par là normalement. Ouais, il faut que je passe là, là, là et là. Tu es toujours fatigué Ah merde pas vraiment aidé le chiant quand même si t'as pas fait du bien quoi oh, peut-être peut-être que le coup d'une du, journée il faut attendre qu'après que ton traitement il fasse effet quoi Je vois que ça, on va dire, pour le moment. L'état du quartier est grave. Donc, il y a sûrement du gros ennemi ici. Désolé, tu m'as demandé depuis deux mois. Et là, je reçois un. Oh, putain. J'ai oublié de. Tu peux donner aux poules ou pas Bah ben non, on peut le manger. Tu veux Je vais le manger, moi. Pardon, excuse-moi. Discord, tu mettrais tout à l'heure. Déjà, j'ai mangé. Ouais, je regarde. Oh là, niveau 16. Ils sont un peu coriens, ces bonhommes là. 16, 15. J'ai peut-être pas le level pour me balader ici, moi. Salut Oh ça va je... Toi je pensais que niveau 16 euh, ça serait plus difficile. J'ai eu peur. Pour rien. les récupérer la quête là bas là est ce que je peux prendre un raccourci il y a un squall niveau 14 hein, quand même et puis encore une bête sauvage à droite là sensible à ça mais pas à ça je peux lui mettre des coups dans la tronche Je 
pas où il est lui. T'es dans une maison. Ouais, il est là-dedans. Il n'y a pas que du squal, hein Si Il y en a qui a des drôles de yeux, là. Bon, j'avance doucement, mais sûrement. C'est par là, hein. Tu tombes pas, mon petit gars. Ouais, pour l'instant, c'est bon. On avance bien. Ah oui, est-ce que les reins, ça me remet de la vie Ma barre de vie, ça me remet pas. J'ai un squal sauvage qui est juste là, non Au-dessus, où est-ce qu'il est pas ma barre je prends cher tellement à ce point là Ah. rien que cherche pas pour mon temps le mec se répare là je pense que là je m'éloigne non je me rapproche pas ce que c'est.
Ça, ça dit sur la gauche. Il faudra peut-être que je rentre là-bas, là. Je vois que lui, mais comment rentrer Hein Putain, il y en a deux, là. l'endurance justement oh putain Allez mon gars. Niveau de charme 3. Oh là, mais je peux même pas y aller quoi. Tu n'y suis pour rien quoi. Blague. pour 5 shilling <rire> et migraine je veux rien pour les migraines en plus Est-ce que je peux voir mes objets Ah, ici. J'ai eu un traitement pour la bronchite. Un pour le rhume. Trois pour la sepsie. Un traitement pour le trou. Ça, fatigue, anémie et sepsie, ouais. Traitement pour le rhume. Traitement pour le rhume bronchite. On a bien au sérieux, fatigue ou anémie. Mmh.
Uh, all right, time to make some more of that miracle stew. Where is the burner? Ouch, oh, shit. Ow. Oh, shit, no more chlorine. Well, the next batch will be a little less miraculous, that's all. Good evening, sir. It's me again. Leave me alone, I say, whoever you are. All right. I shan't insist. Goodbye for now, sir.
Good evening, sir. It's me again. Leave me alone, I say, whoever you are. Ah, c'est pas lui qui a besoin d'aide, j'ai cru entendre qu'il a... voulait de l'aide. Merde, quelqu'un allait, j'ai entendu. Je fais chier ça. Peut-être que je continue ici à avancer là.
I cannot enter.
I said stay away, sir. <laughs> It's locked.
lucky to have Dr. Reed, you know. I met him in New York once. If only there were more of us, with less resignation and more determination. I know I can count on you. I wish I could say the same for the others. You look exhausted. You're pushing yourself too hard. You don't have to bear the burdens of this hospital. Flew took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <coughs> Mr. Rainfields, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <coughs> Now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind, the blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. Apologies. You've taken me by surprise. I'm very happy to see you. The pleasure is mine, Doctor. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Pardon my boldness, your ladyship, but I have questions concerning this condition we share. As a newborn, your hunger for answers is rivaled only by your thirst for blood. But the questions need weight. I'm a scientist. My trade is in the deciphering of mysteries, and I need information to feed my mind. I will gladly answer every question you have, but first, prove yourself capable of resolving my predicament without eating the culprit. Have any of the patients given you trouble? These poor souls have so little left to live for. I do my best to ease their pain. The world would be a better place if it were cared for by women like you. You make me blush. I am simply a necessary evil. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. If we're dealing with an ordinary criminal, surely you've the means to deal with it yourself, if I may. As immortal tradition doth dictate, all fangs and hypnotic eyes ablaze. The blood would run like a river. That's what I hope to avoid. Violence has a tendency to spiral out of control. Who would be so foolish as to threaten you, a kindred spirit? Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire 
would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. What are your expectations? Please be precise. As the newly appointed surgeon of this hospital, you are in an excellent position to ask innocent questions and deftly learn the identity of my blackmailer. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Is our little mystery closer to being solved, Dr. Reed? I think of nothing else, my lady. My situation is delicate, and it occupies all my thoughts. The blackmail must stop. I need assurance.
still standing after this epidemic. Please, sir. I need help bad. What's going on? I'm Blight, sir. Newton Blight. I've lost my mate. Can't find him anywhere. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed from the Pembroke Hospital. Please, calm down and give me more details. Oswald and myself were both infantry, sir. We were en route for the hospital, but... Well, we had a disagreement. And Oswald ran off towards the canal. How long have you been searching for him? I, ca I can't go there. Too many rats by the water. Fucking rats. Can't stand them since the war, sir. Can't stand them at all. Don't be ashamed, Mr. Blight. Many soldiers who survived the trenches suffer from musophobia. I'll see what I can do for your friend. This is a dangerous part of town. What are you doing here? We were looking for the Pembroke Hospital. He... We both need help. T treatment, I mean. To get some sleep. Just need to feel better, sir. What can you tell me about yourself? I'm Oswald's best friend. We served in the same regiment, sir. Taken care of each other since we came back from the front. What can you tell me about your friend? His name is Oswald Thatcher. We survived the war together. Oswald is... nervous and quite fragile since we came back from the war. Where was your friend the last time you saw him? He went down by the canal. He didn't want to go to the hospital. I think he went to the sewers on purpose. So I couldn't go after him. I have all the information I need for now. If I find anything out about your friend, I'll let you know as soon as I can. Thank you, Dr. Reed. It's locked, all right. Have you found Oswald? Not yet, sir. I need more information first. All right. What do you want to know?
I have all the information I need for now. If I find anything out about your friend, I'll let you know as soon as I can. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Hey, Doc. Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in the hospital? Blackmail? That's not my style. Too risky. The black market, though. Now that's where the money is. I'll leave you for now, Mr. Coxon. I cannot enter. Yeah! <laughs> 
it's locked. It's locked, all right.
It's locked. It's locked, all right. It's locked. <laughs> 